Also today, former U.S. Northern District Attorney Steve Dettelbach was named the new head of the Bureau of Alcohol, Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco and Firearms. The Cleveland native was confirmed by the Senate in a 48 to 46 vote, making him the first confirmed director of ATF since 2015. This is bad. This is really bad. Welcome to another installment of the Connecticut Gun Bench. Today's video is brought to you by PAN Firearms, PAN Firearms LLC for your NRA certification and multifaceted gun training. You can reach us at 203-300-6343 or use our website at www.panfirearmsllc.com. As always, there'll be a link in the description box below. And we gun owners, we need to talk about this. Now, if you don't know, not a while back, I made a video on the fact that uh, I actually made two, but I'm going to focus on the one where Biden nominated a, um, from Ohio, Stephen Dettelbach to run the ATF. You got to remember, he was the second nominee because the first one, David Chipman, was basically, he basically destroyed himself. But now Steve Dettelbach was the next nominee. And as of the 12th, I believe, he has been confirmed to the seat of the ATF as the director. And I spoke about him in the first video and what he was about. And this is not a good look for us. So I'm gonna talk about this here to show you who he is. This is from, uh, it's called Gun Mag Warehouse. This is their blog and they got a good little article on here where they display some of the facts. As I did talk about a lot of what he was about in my first video about him, but this is just a recap. And this is after his confirmation, this came out. So it titled, Senate confirms Steve Nettebach as new ATF director. And this is published on the 13th of July. The Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives has a new chief. The Senate confirmed former U.S. Attorney Steve Dettelbach as the agency's first official director since 2015 and only the second in its history. The Biden nominee cleared the Senate on a 48-46 vote when Republican Susan Collins of Maine, people in Maine, I wish you would stop voting for her, and Rob Portman of Ohio, same thing there in Ohio. Voted with their Democrat counterparts and not counterparts because both Collins and Portman are literally rhinos. They are actually Democrats. Collins and Portman also provided the deciding votes that advanced Dettelbach's nomination out of committee. Here's the important part, who is Steve Dettelbach? Dettelbach is Biden's second nominee for ATF director following gun control activist David Chipman, who couldn't even sway all the Senate Democrats the new director seems better qualified than Chipman, but zealously anti-gun, Biden chose him for a reason. Dettelbach ran for Ohio Attorney General as a Democrat in 2018. He was endorsed by Mike Bloomberg's Every Town for Gun Safety and Moms Demand Action. Right away, when you see those two groups involved in the nomination of anybody, you should worry. The same group supported his ATF nomination, of course they did. He advocated for an assault weapons ban and promised to crack down on gun crime in general. Dettelbach also called for so-called universal background checks. He lost the election to NRA endorse Dave Yost. So Ohio was saved basically from him. Now the nation has to deal with him. But here's a quote from Everytown. I don't care about them, but the new director's positions are harder to pin down than Chipman's. He has expressed support for gun control groups via Twitter, but his language is usually couched in supportive terms for victims, followed by calls to do something. What something is remains to be seen. So he played his hand a little bit more slicker than Chipman. Chipman just flat out came out and said, you know, I'm anti-gun, flat out. Dettelbach seems to be playing the shadow game, okay? An assault weapons ban. Senator Tom Cotton, asked Dettelbach to define an assault weapon during the Senate hearings. Dettelbach couldn't do it. Cotton then called him out for pushing a ban on something he couldn't define. Dettelbach responded that defining such things is Congress job. I acknowledge it's a very difficult issue, he said. That is for this body to decide. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that. Gun owners know that such words from the ATF are meaningless. The agency's rogue nature is well known. 
but the Supreme Court may have mitigated Dettelbach's ability to set his own agenda. The recently decided West Virginia versus EPA controlled the agency's ability to make sweeping regulations amounting to federal law. The same standard now applies to all federal agencies. I've spoken about that. I spoke about that earlier, um, where this, the West Virginia versus EPA, where the Supreme Court reigned in the FBA, uh, the EPA, and told Biden that he could not use these letter agencies to push his agenda. So that's the one thing that's on our side. But let's keep going, including the ATF. The goal was to return power from unelected bureaucrats to the elected members of Congress. We'll see, have to see whether Congress chooses to embrace it. Steve Dettelbach and Joe Biden. Dettelbach runs the ATF, but he ultimately answers to the White House. He is charged with implementing Biden's call to rein in rogue gun dealers who transfer firearms to ineligible people. Well, I don't have a problem with that. You should, gun dealers shouldn't do that. Biden promotes a zero tolerance policy in such matters. Senator Chuck Grassley asked Dettelbach if zero tolerance included clerical errors as opposed to willful bad conduct. Dettelbach replied that the key to enforcement program is it has to be fair, it has to be consistent, and it has to be effective. As a lawyer, the word willful implies something more than an inadvertent error. It implies an intentional misstatement. And I would commit to continue doing that to hear all perspectives to be a fair regulator. We all know Biden would love to harass all gun dealers out of business. We'll have to see whether Dettelbach feels the same. Okay. I'm gonna come down to here, this line here, because uh, there's a lot of back and forth here that I don't need to get into, but here it is. Like I said, Biden picked Dettelbach for a reason, and the president calls a shot, or whoever is making Biden's sock puppet mouth move. Same thing either way. Again, West Virginia versus EPA may help here. Seeing how ATF operates in the nation's many Second Amendment sanctuaries should also be interesting since those localities have barred cooperation with feds acting unconstitutionally. And then he goes on to talk about you know, the ATF and it needs a full-time director. Yes, it does need a full-time director, but we got to be careful as to who that director is. It's like putting the, you know, the fox in charge of the hen house and then shock when the hens start disappearing and the fox has no, you know, has no answers to why. But, okay. And that's pretty much where we go. But I want to, um, I want to play this video, this is Tom Cotton, very sharp guy. Oh, he's from, uh, is he, Ohio? Ah, look at him up. When he's questioning Dettelbach on what defining what an assault weapon is. Let's watch that. Mr. Dettelbach, in your 2018 campaign for attorney general, you called for a ban on so-called assault weapons. What is an assault weapon? Could you define it for me? Senator, I, uh, uh, when I was a candidate for office, I did uh, talk about restrictions on assault weapons. I did not define the term, and I haven't gone through the process of defining that term. That would only be for the Congress if it chose to take that up uh, to do. And if you chose to take it up, I would uh, be at the ATF, and there was perhaps expertise or data we could give you so that you could make the appropriate decision to both uh, protect the public and protect the Second Amendment. So, so you're running for public office and you called for a ban on assault weapons, but you don't have a definition for assault weapons? Senator, uh, it would only be for a legislative body, whether it was the Ohio legislature or the Congress, it would only be for a legislative body to do that work. And I acknowledge it would be a difficult task to define assault weapons because on one hand, you don't want it to be so narrow that it, it doesn't offer the protections that are intended. And on the other hand, you certainly don't want it to be so broad so that it infringes unnecessarily on the rights of citizens. So I acknowledge that's a difficult task, but it would be for this body to do, not for me. What, why is it so hard to define assault weapons? Well, I, I think, Senator, what I, what I told you, which is that it is, you don't, you don't want it to be so narrow as to be meaningless, and you don't want it to be so broad as to uh, infringe on the rights of law-abiding Americans unnecessarily. Congress took an effort at that uh, definition in 1994. Uh, what did you think of that definition that Congress used? I don't know enough about that. I, that's a definition that I'm not particularly familiar with, and I haven't studied the data on how uh, on that particular definition. I've heard 
comments on both sides of that, Senator. I, I acknowledge that's a very difficult issue. I, it, it, that is for this body to decide. Is it, is it because that there's really not a category of weapons known as assault weapons? I mean, there's rifles, there's shotguns, there's pistols. Can you go into a federally licensed firearm dealer and find the category of weapons labeled on the wall as assault weapons? I, I don't believe that's a category of, of weapons that's labeled on the wall of uh, retailers. Uh, it's not necessarily what retailers call it that would affect the decision of, of a legislative body, but no to answer to your question. So it's what politicians and lawyers in Washington call it. Well, it would, Senator, uh, for me, it would be what elected legislators who are charged with having these discussions and debates would choose or not choose to call it. Okay. I, I think it's very telling that you're nominated to lead the ATF and, and you don't have a definition of assault weapon and the point is that there is really no such thing as a category of weapons known as assault weapons. There are rifles, there are shotguns, there are pistols, they have properties, they have features, um, but there is no such thing as a category of assault weapons. Um, I, I want to turn to the Southern Poverty Law Center. Uh, in 2017, you called for treating as terrorist groups uh, organizations that have been labeled as hate groups by the Southern Poverty Law Center, P Southern Poverty Law Center, which itself um, is a corrupt slush fund for liberal causes with its own very troubled history of racist and sexist record. Um, you sh said in that op-ed that we should pass new laws to label those groups as terrorists and, quote, disrupt them. Um, one such group that the Southern Poverty Law Center has labeled as a hate group, which you therefore said you would treat as a terrorist group, is the Family Research Council. Do you believe that the Family Research Council is a hate group and should be treated as terrorists? Uh, Senator, um, uh, I think in the article that you're referring to, Senator, I, I, talked to, I, I cited uh, a number of hate groups, the number that the Southern Poverty Law Center said existed in Ohio. And, uh, Senator, I, I do I mean, not... There were about 33 of them. I don't believe that... I have no, um, I'm not a member of that group, I, 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 and I'm not associated... In, in, with that group, uh, but it would be obviously not for a private group to define what a terrorist organization was. I was making the point that there are domestic terrorism organizations that espouse violence. The key is groups that espouse violence, um, and that we ought to uh, treat those domestic terrorism organizations that espouse violence the same way or using some of the same models as I was using on Al-Qaeda when I did Al-Qaeda cases, Hezbollah cases, because the key is violence, right? That's, that's so the, the, but the Southern the, Poverty Law Center calls groups like the Family Research Council a hate group, and you said you wanted to treat them like a terrorist group. What about another one is the Alliance Defending Freedom. Do you think the sir, Alliance I, Defending Freedom should be treated like Al-Qaeda? Sir, I'm not, uh, I'm not familiar with either of those groups, and I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't you categorize familiar, them. But you're familiar with the Southern Poverty Law Center, right? I'm familiar with the group generally. Yes, I am, sir, but I'm Are not familiar with its troubled history of racism and sexism. Sir, I'm not deeply familiar with them. Okay. I know I know something about the group, but I, I'm not familiar with the things that you may be referring okay. should, to. Sir. Should you be confirmed, I encourage you to familiarize yourself with the Southern Poverty Law Center before you ever cite them and certainly before you rely on them using federal power. My time's expired. Okay. It's very interesting how the man ran, when he ran for Attorney General of Ohio, he ran on pushing an assault weapons ban. But he can't define what an assault weapon is. He can't personally define it, but he was running on the platform of enacting an assault weapons ban. He knows exactly what he thinks an assault weapons ban is. He's just being damn careful in that hearing to not say the wrong things. <laughs> but I want to play this because I did a video previously on David Chipman. I want you to listen to David Chipman's answer, once again from Tom Cotton, the same question to define what an assault weapon is. I want to turn to a second matter now, Mr. Chipman. You have called for an assault weapons ban. I have a simple question for you. What is an assault weapon? Senator, um, an assault weapon would be, in, in the context of the question you asked, what Congress uh, defines it as. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Does it make you feel like these guys have a script when they walk into these things? Fascinating, isn't it? But... Dettelbach being in charge of the ATF is not a good thing for us because he is anti-gun. He just happens to be slicker in the way that he presents 
that attitude. He got, you know, you saw the way he spoke in the, in the video. He was very slick about it. He wasn't letting anything out. He knows what, what he defines as an assault weapon. And, in, and I'm telling you now, in his mind, it's anything that takes a magazine that's semi-automatic. I'm guaranteeing that's what he thinks an assault weapon is. Like I said, we have some protection from him and Biden with Biden using the ATF as a sledgehammer against gun owners because of what happened with the West Virginia case, the EPA West Virginia case with the, you know, the court, the Supreme Court telling Biden that he could not use these alphabet agencies to enforce his policies without law to back it. So if Dettelbach and Biden want to try to pull something off, they probably will have to go through Congress. And looking at the potential thrashing that the Democrats are going to take in 2022, I think we're safe for a minute, but that doesn't mean we don't, we, you know, we get to put down the vigilant hat and not, you know, keep an eye on what's going on here. But let me know what you think. As always, you can leave your comments in the comment section below. And as always, any statements of violence or statements that lead to violence will be removed. Please like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to hit that notification bell so you get notified the next time a video goes live. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.